One of the most important things that we've done in our soybean fields the last few years is treated with insecticide and fungicide post-emerge to control diseases and insects. Now wait a second, we've got soybeans that are going in this field next year. Yep. We're using crop rotation, Brian. We're, we've got a, a yep. grass crop here, it's a broadleaf crop next year. Yep. We should avoid a lot of those issues. You know what? We? We're using crop rotation, we're picking good varieties, and we're using seed treatments. So you would say, well, how much problem are you really going to have? And you know what? Some years we don't have a lot of problem. But the thing is, when soybeans are worth $10, $11 a bushel, and it only costs us $5 to go with a half rate of fungicide, and 3 or $4 to go with the full rate of insecticide, that's a pretty inexpensive treatment, less than one bushel. And do you honestly think that if you could control most of your diseases and most of your insects out there, that you're not going to gain a bushel of soybeans? I mean, come on, you know, sure, if beans are worth four or five bucks in a bushel, I got to really think about this one. But insecticide and fungicide costs have come down. Soybean prices have gone up. This makes for a good treatment. Okay, now we're talking about two totally different things here. Fungicides control disease and insecticides control bugs. Well, you can see if there's bugs in the field and you go out and kill them. All right. But with disease, you can't really say, well, okay, I see disease out there now, now I've got to go treat. So to go into the year and say, I'm definitely going to spray fungicide <laughs> and insecticide is not really a fair statement because that's no. not what we do on our farm. We plan for it, we'll prepay for it because most years we end up doing it. But like the insecticide, for example, if there's no bugs, we will not spray. Let's just get that real clear. We will not spray insecticide if there are no bugs. But fungicide, we absolutely will spray if we don't see any disease. Well, wait a second, though, not necessarily, because with diseases, you have to have the disease triangle. And that basically means you've got to have the host, you've got to have the pathogen, you've got to have the environment. Well, if we end up with a drought summer, we're not spraying fungicide. So yes, chances are we're going to spray fungicide, but it's not a guarantee. But we are planning for this, and here's one of the reasons why. On our farm this year, again, we did a trial where we had fungicide insecticide versus no fungicide insecticide. And all we did is went out with a half rate of headline, three ounces, cost about five bucks, and silencer at 3.84 ounces, probably four dollars an acre, so nine bucks, and we gained 7.7 .7 bushels. I know, Brad, I am getting tired of doing these trials because they cost us <laughs> yeah. money. Well, but the yeah. real story is, is we lost 7.7 .7 bushels. But the thing is, our trial, our trial area keeps going down, down, down. <laughs> it was just a small area this year. Next year, it's going to be non-existent because I agree, we've had consistent consistent gains over the years. But when I say consistent gains, it will range. Some years it's only going to be three or five bushels, other years 14 Well, bushels. and it depends so. on the thing that's going on in our field. Maybe one year our big gain is because of the bugs and disease, ah, it didn't turn out to be a big issue. Or the other way around. Maybe the bugs, we saw them out there, we went ahead and sprayed, but our neighbor that didn't spray, well, the bugs never went anywhere. They, they didn't have the right conditions later in the season. So you just don't know which, okay, which so, of those components so, is going to be. So pay. let's just make a couple of comments here on each one individually. With the insecticide thing, You've heard a lot about this 250 aphid threshold. Don't believe that. I mean, I don't know what in the world they're thinking about, but the threshold is way less than 250, especially when you've got a treatment that's only going to cost you four bucks. You can throw it right in. You're out there spraying well, fungicide if, anyway. If and you don't believe, so if you money. don't believe, Brian, just try it on your own farm. Just take yep. take part of a field or take one field next to another field, whatever you want to do. But just do your own trial on your own farm. Spray a little bit earlier than you normally would, and just see what happens. Make sure there are bugs out there first. And the, and the population is increasing. But this year with soybean aphids, we sprayed when there are about 20 or 30 aphids per plant, if that. So the 250 aphid number, that's wrong. Don't listen to it. Okay, on fungicide, we're going to control a variety of diseases. The thing is, we're going out with a half rate because we're in a relatively dry area. If you're really worried about lots of diseases moving in, by all means, use the full rate. We also get worried about disease resistance eventually to strobal urine products like Headline. So don't get us wrong. We're not saying in all cases use a half rate. In some cases you can do it, in other cases you need a full rate or maybe you need a different type of chemistry. And it just depends on where you're at. If we were down south and had lots more humidity, had lots more rain, this would be a big deal for us every year. For us it's kind of hit and miss. The thing is we're only going to gain a little bit most of the time when we spray a fungicide. When you're in an area, in an environment like down south where they have lots more moisture, you know what, you're probably going to gain a lot more bushels. Sure, you're going to have to use a full rate instead of half rate, 
but so what? I mean, if you gain five, eight bushels from a $10 treatment, I mean, that's a no brainer. Well, the challenge for us is really timing because for us, most of these diseases happen once we get into the flowering stages. Yep. Once we've got flowers, that's usually a good time to get started. But really the best gains we've had have been at the R2, which is full bloom, to R3 first pod stage. Once we get some flowers that start drying up, that seems to be a place for infection, especially things like white mold. That's where it gets into our crops. There are a lot of cultural things you can do to help you out like we're doing here in this field. It's, it's corn, we've done some tillage, uh, this kind of stuff. Now we're gonna plant beans next year. That's fine, that helps. But you do still need some other things uh, like a fungicide application in that R2, R3 time period to protect yourself from a wide variety of diseases. So once again, we gained 7.7 .7 bushels this year, again on a trial where we used a half rate fungicide and a full rate insecticide controlling diseases and a number of insects, including soybean aphids. So obviously that was a good return on investment and something I wouldn't mind repeating. Well, sometimes you also need to throw herbicide in when you're spraying that fungicide and insecticide because if you have a weed like our Weed of the Week, you can't let it get away. We'll show you how to control it coming up next.